It's October 30th, 2023. This is a special bonus podcast version of Rook. This is a special bonus po- special bonus <laughs> podcast version of Rook Conversations from to and about the Iranian diaspora and beyond. I'm Gian Gomeshi. Hello to you from Toronto. Hello to you from Canada. Salam Dustan Aziz. Durur Bashoma. It's the Monday Roundup. How many of these do we need to do regularly in succession before they're not bonus podcasts anymore? <laughs> I think they're always going to be bonus. That's, this, we, we've just, now branded it as bonus. It's like a, some kind of store that gives, you know, every, yeah. it's two for one, but it's a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it, this is the bonus That's edition. the marketing of it. Yes, oh. it is. Hello. And we have the marketing <laughs> expert here. I see what you did there, Paga. In the studio, she's our regular Rook Roundup specialist and a producer for us here at Rook, Smart Pega Ganji. Hello, Pega. Hello. SPG, and also in the studio, an Iranian Canadian marketing strategist, designer who's been very active in the Iranian community, especially during the uprising of the last year, Raho Ru. Hello, hello. Hello, Yay. hello. Uh, welcome to this bonus podcast where Thank we you. would do, well, no, I'm saying this to the audience, but also welcome to you, <laughs> Thank you. Raho. Yeah. I thought you Back meant me. Teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and you, yes. Welcome to you. What I mean, I'm, you're becoming me. a regular, so I don't have to say welcome to you. Okay. We've I'll been keep, Also, okay. we've been talking to each other for about That's a, true. an hour before That's the true. show starts. That's true. Uh, so, <laughs> so I'm not welcome. <laughs> you're, you, you're most welcome. You're most welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here. And you're both in red jackets. I know. We're it's, matching. It's like a liberal party convention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. Maybe about not that. for you. Yes. Not. Yeah. Let's uh, not go there. For me, it's like a fashion choice because it's trending right now. Right? What, oh. red, red is, is trending. I did trending. not know that. Yeah. It goes with our studio. Yes. And so, does. as do I. I'm in black, and you're in red. So, black and red are the colors mm-hmm. of Rook. Uh, so this um, this is where we do a roundup on Mondays and talk about what's going on in the world, particularly with a perspective from the Iranian diaspora. First of all. This is what's going on in the world, at least this part of the world. Tomorrow is Hallow- Halloween. Yes, mm-hmm. it is. Happy Halloween. Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween. Mm. So in sync. Look at us. The, the red and the... The red and the... You yeah. know? What's happening? Like sisters. <laughs> uh, so so this, this Halloween thing. Mm-hmm. Now, I... Uh, we're going to get to the serious stuff. Not that Halloween isn't serious. Some take it very seriously. But uh, I, um, I am very much... Uh, uh, a fan of Halloween in as much as for the kids mm-hmm. that the, the the candy for the kids yes love it loved it as a kid love it love handing out the candy as an adult mm-hmm. I think that's wonderful and I and I and I dress up the house and all of that like the outside of the house right I'm into that but this um this thing about having to wear a costume <sighs> When you're invited to a party, like I love I, it, I hate it. <laughs> okay, I'm glad. Oh, so we've got difference of yeah, oh, I love all it. All right, I let, love let it. me just say that. This weekend, uh, I was invited with a, a, a good friend, a common friend, actually, yes. of Pega and I's, uh, invited us to a party. Uh, separately, we were invited to this party. And and um, this is like a month ago. She was mm-hmm. like, hey, will you come to the party? It's a Halloween party. And I was like, uh... <laughs> Okay, does that does does that mean I have to wear a costume? Our costume is mandatory. My first question. Yeah, and she's like, "Oh my God, yeah, of course, right?" And I yeah. was like, "Oh, I have been dreading." Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's like I, I I mean, it's worse than when I used to go for allergy shots as a kid <laughs> and get the needle in the arm. Like I, I just like oh. I have to find a costume, and what is the costume going to be? And it's it's like hanging over my head, yeah. and uh, you know I spend random moments of the day searching Amazon for <laughs> and seeing like some <laughs> Superman costume that's going to be too tight on me or whatever, you know. So and and so and and also I don't even go to parties. I, when I go, I, I stay for like an hour. Like I'm doing all of this to go somewhere for, for about forty five minutes yeah. and not drink, which is my thing, you know. So. Yep. <laughs> So, not that I'm against drinking, of course, but, uh, you know, kids, please do if you want to drink, but I, <laughs> it's just not my thing. Responsible. So, yeah, that's right. So, so finally, I, uh, 
I put some effort in. I, yes. I put together some sort of an ensemble, mm-hmm. in which included eyeliner and this <laughs> golf say, yes. golf jacket and a hat. I don't even know. Oh, what was that a jacket from like just your closet? No, 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 oh, no, okay. no, 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 okay. no, no. Oh, don't even get me started on that <laughs> now jacket. I have to see it. That was now a jacket that Super P, uh-huh. our my right hand, you know, Paris right here. She was she she insisted that I should get that from Amazon. Okay. I paid money for that Got it. garbage oversized <laughs> cloak or whatever it was. But anyway, understood. I don't. I I wasn't even sure what I was. Right? I thought you were a pirate. Well, that's what I figured out I was. Okay. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure. I was just like, okay. I'm just, then somebody, I got there and some guy was like, oh, you are Captain Jack. And I was like, yeah, that's what I am, oh, Captain Jack. Okay. So then I was a pirate after that. And at first it was like a per- half uh-huh. Persian party. And so yeah, I got it from the accent. The accent. Thank you. <laughs> I am going to a Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't say that. But anyway, uh, so and at the party, uh, the first couple of people who were like, hey, what are you? I said, I'm a lawman. And they were like, what? what? They don't even know what that is. So I was like, yeah, I got to rebrand this. you know. <laughs> so anyway, now I'm talking to you, Rao, yes. because I'm about to talk about Pega. Uh-oh. <laughs> so how much effort, how much frustration, you know, there's so much going on. There's The last week was a bad week. There was all kinds of things going on. And I've had to get this fucking costume together. I'm holding so, my breath. So then Pega turns <laughs> up, right? <laughs> now... <laughs> Full marks for creativity, mm-hmm. uh-huh. but but Pega turns up like with perfect hair, like <laughs> in a like somebody who's going to a nice party, you uh-huh. know, is just like. What was and the costume? There was no costume. Yes, there now was. hang on a second. Her costume, her. Co- are you familiar with the show Succession? Yes. All right, you know, so the Roy family, Siobhan yes. Roy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So her, I like so Siobhan I'm Roy. like, hey, uh-huh. Pega. What's going on? And and uh, I didn't want to say like what's you know, <laughs> where's, your know, where's your costume? So she cut, but she realizes you know she has to explain. And then she's wearing a name tag. It wasn't just a name. <laughs> tag. She turns the name <laughs> tag around, and it's Siobhan Roy. And I'm like, and I'm actually no, my no. reaction was that's genius way to go. But I thought I went home and I was just like, how much time and effort and money did I put into this <laughs> costume that I didn't even know what it was? And this woman turns up with a. a name tag so and, you know. let me let me defend myself here right, because yeah. that was actually very creative might I add okay. my QR code actually worked first of all <laughs> oh. second of all it was completely identical to the exact same name tag that Siobhan actually wore right. in season 2 episode 6 uh-huh. when they went to that um, what was it the no the, one knows what you're talking about. Okay, well, I, know, I, I su- know what she's talking about. Well, I mean, yeah, fans I, I of mean, Succession. If you, if you've seen There's somebody succession. in Tabriz right now who's like, what's, <laughs> what are they talking about? Yeah, okay. But anyway, I, yeah. I just wanted to say that it was creative because I made sure that there was no mistakes, no errors, and it was completely true to what was in the script. It was exactly for, the same way. For and people the QR who know code who worked. that person is. Did and, you wear a wig? No. No, a wig. <laughs> she wore nothing. Like, like I wore a black turtle night dress have had like because a, she wears turtle. You could have had a, ba- a bank balance, or you could have had something. You know, the some kind of. The name tag was great. Come on, you said it yourself. It was genius. It was genius. It was a genius uh, move. Uh, <laughs> it was <laughs> no. a genius way of getting out uh, out of having to to do anything. Yes, have to work, which my, I my which original... I applaud you for because honestly, in the end, I was like. Why did I put, and you inevitably, like, you know, there are people who put a lot of effort. First of all, Halloween, there's the girls who, you know, wear, <laughs> wear whiskers or something and go, I'm a cat. No, you're dressed to go to a club <laughs> yes. and look hot because yes. it's Halloween, right? And then there's like a guy, there was, a, there was at least seven guys who had some, like, a striped shirt on and they were like, I guess a person who goes to jail or something. I don't know yeah. what that was. There's always like the staple costumes that everyone just... Yeah. You know how hard I worked a, on my costume? And like it's always like a resort. sexy something. Like yeah. a sexy it always has to be a sexy. A sexy yeah. cat. And so, I you know, you're that. a fan of this dressing I'm, up. Totally. So totally. Are you, you one of those like super creative? Yes. Okay. I go full on out. Like, but I'm never scary. I don't, I don't, I don't do scary. Okay. I'm usually like, I turn myself into a legitimate like cat. You know what? Okay. A legitimate <laughs> cat. Legitimate cat. <laughs> Not a sexy cat. No, no, So no. what, what did, no. did you, ha- did you dress up this weekend for something? Or? No, tomorrow no. I'm going to be dressed up. You will dress up for the Halloween. For the Halloween. To hand out the candy. Yes. You're not one of those people who turns up at 930 after all the kids have gone to bed and, and then does trick or treat. And no, no, but we're what are you I'm dressing going up as? As Phoenix. As a phoenix, yeah. Oh. yeah. A phoenix. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's a bird. bird? A bird yeah. yeah. I'm going to have like a beak and everything, which I'm Mm -hmm. constructing myself. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. You really do go on. You're doing this so that kids who come to the door will see. Well, yes, but also because I just genuinely like turning myself into things (laughs) that I'm not. Okay. (laughs) You know what I mean? Now, here's the part of the show each week where I ask something naive about (laughs) Iran, which is that I don't understand. Is Halloween a thing in Iran? Because... Because uh, some people, because of course, all Iranians have to say, of course, we know better. Mm. It's number one, you know, whatever. <laughs> we do Halloween number one. And um, but then I was like, you know, like Paris, I was like, yeah, we have Halloween, you know. And then I think we have she's like, like, I, I didn't Halloween. know what trick or treat is, you know, which is so I, I don't know what kind of Halloween that is. Yeah. I mean, Raha's probably better at explaining this, I but my understanding it. is there's something similar. People dress yeah. up as the Phoenix. Well, yeah, huh? well, um, for your information. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, no, inform. Uh, honest question. We, honest we question. used to have trick-or-treating in the name of Qashuq Zani, which was something that used to happen in Charshamba Suri, like the last Wednesday of the year. Mm-hmm. People would um, disguise, I mean, Qashuq? kids. Qashuq Zani. So I'll explain why it's called Qashuq Zani. Qashuq is like the... Wife spoon. plate? Spoon. Why, why spoon? spoon, yes. So yeah, spoon hitting almost. Spoon. It's called oh. spoon No, hitting. not like wife, like Zani, like Zani. to hit. Not Zani like, like okay, hitting, right? Hitting, right? <laughs> So, <laughs> wife spoon. Wife spoon. Yeah. Wife, that's what you got from that. I don't know. Zan. Okay. <laughs> yes, people yeah. spoon each other. Yeah. <laughs> spooning no. is, con- yes. is nice. Yes, yeah, spooning exactly. means cuddling. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, but no, this one means um, they would kids and um, younger women would disguise themselves and they would go to their neighbors and they would have a plate in their hand with a spoon and they would go ding 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 on the plate. And then the neighbors would come out and give them candies um, and treats and like gifts. No. Yeah. Well, so somewhat kind of similar. Similar, yeah. similar to trick or treating. Yeah. It just wasn't scary. It was for good almonds and like for, for new year, like starting the new year mm-hmm. with with candies and with sweetness and did with you say gifts. Good almonds? No. What like, did you say? Like good almonds. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Almonds. <laughs> almonds. <laughs> almonds. I don't think almonds are ever good. Why? Good almonds? Can you have a good almond? I think an almond They're is. They're meant to be bad. Yeah, almonds yeah. are bad. Really? Yeah. Okay. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Good, uh, no, no, no. You're probably I'd right. I'd stick with I mean, good you, almonds. Almonds, yeah, <laughs> good almonds. They're, they're always good. good. Almonds. But wait, you know, did almonds you say are good for you. it was just kids and women? So like men couldn't do that? Men didn't do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But mad <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's what what it used to be for us. We never did like Halloween as it is known today but now they're doing it in Iran especially mm-hmm. in like in schools and kindergarten gardens now that everyone has exposure to this side of the world but they the don't go house society. to house and say trick or they treat don't, but in their I've heard Nabot, I've say. heard yeah I've heard that in their ki- kindergartens they they do that and actually when I used to go to um, daycare when I was really little mm-hmm. like this we're talking about like 20 hopefully you were little 20. when you went to daycare yeah <laughs> I don't know yeah like, <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> welcome. Yeah, 25 welcome. Years. Thank I, you very I welcome much. you here. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, 25 years ago, um, we used to have Halloween. I mean, my mom used to make really cool costumes. You knew what Halloween me. was. Yeah, but we wouldn't do trick or treating. No. That's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't know. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one thing. When I came as a kid from England, I didn't uh-huh. know what Halloween was. I didn't know when we came to We Canada. had Guy Fox Day. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. We had Guy Fox Day, which was like a, you burn an effigy of Guy Fox and dance around a, a fire, but you don't, but we didn't have Halloween, at least when I was a kid in, in England. Mm-hmm. But that we, was the that was the twentieth century. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was not the twenty first century. So things that, have changed. M- I was a kid in twentieth century too. Excuse me. And I had, <laughs> I had no clue when I came from Iran what really? Halloween was. Yeah, we called it Balmaske. We called it Balmaske. Did you not and call it Qashogazan? No, no, no. <laughs> Qashogazani. I actually learned about Qashogazani when I came to Canada from one of our relatives who used to live here for years and years, and they would mm. do, they used to do that when she was back in Iran. But yeah. We're coming to you on rookmedia.com. You can link to all of our platforms from our main website, rookmedia.com, Spotify, SoundCloud. This is marketing. See, am I doing thank it right? You. Yeah. Apple, no, not thank you. I'm asking you for your help. <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Instagram, Castbox, YouTube, Telegram. You can support us by going to the support us button on our website, rookmedia.com. It takes you to our Patreon page. And it's very simple from there on. Uh, We'd love you to become a Rook member and support us at Patreon if you're so inclined. If not, we'll just keep giving these to you for free. Um, (laughs) 
And we really appreciate you guys listening. So um, for the roundup today, we have... I've got three or four items. The first one, interestingly enough, it's a big one, but it it it's it has an interesting Iranian connection, and that is the the death of rest in peace uh, Chandler Bing, um, Matthew uh, Perry. the Matthew Perry being the actor, um, Chandler Bing being the the way we many of us remember him. Matthew Perry, of course, from Friends. Those of us growing up in Canada are keenly aware that he was Canadian, an Ottawa boy, because um, we're always aware of famous Canadians. Um, but what, but I have to say, uh, this has been I've been I've had this dilemma over the last twenty four hours. If I wanted to talk about this, because I've had, I've had this idea for years now, like at least since we did the Pink mm-hmm. Floyd series, which was called Why Pink Floyd, where I wanted to explore what is this crazy obsession that Iranians have with Pink Floyd and why Pink Floyd in particular as opposed to the Rolling Stones or the Eagles or Jay-Z or whatever. Uh, I I have wanted to do, and by the way, if anybody steals this idea now, this oh. conversation on tape will prove that this is uh, <laughs> uh, our idea. I, I've wanted to do a why friends. Uh, mm-hmm. In other words, what was it or is it about friends that has so connected with Iranians, and I know this because of this connection, because uh, it is, I'm, I, I, I've been kind of doing this unscientific research for a few years now, where I ask people about friends, They, it's hard, I'm hard pressed to find an Iranian under the age of 50 that doesn't know friends, doesn't know the characters, doesn't know the episodes. There's this whole swath of television and film and rock bands and artistry and whatever that Iranians have no idea about but they're super into mm-hmm. friends and this was born out uh, over the last 24 hours I noticed with the death of Matthew Perry I saw all kinds of friends of mine Iranian friends of mine in social media uh, yeah. mourning like as if Shajarian has died you know and Matthew Perry was great. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're a Friends fan, you know how great an actor he was. And by the way, he wasn't just in Friends. He did all kinds of yes. other things. I know you want to talk about that, Pega. But this connection with Iranians, I did a quick search of Persian Twitter with the help of Google Translate. <laughs> let me let me read you a few things that Iranians, I think from inside Iran, this was all written in Persian, said this is from uh, somebody on Twitter, on X, sorry, uh, in social media saying, this is Jan Dinsky says uh, in Persian, I don't think it makes sense for a Middle Easterner with a thousand fundamental misfortunes to shed tears over the, de- over the death of an actor in America, but I burst into tears. You got it. You are my friend during hard and lonely nights. My heart broke at least. I hope your sufferings in the world are over and you have calmed down. Goodbye, Chandler Bing. Wow. This is from About Z, also in Persian, uh, in social media. In the most difficult days, Friends was always a small way to get away from the real world. Without Matthew Perry, you might not be able to watch Friends without getting upset. Every time you are reminded that the real world is much more than real than real than words that you can never escape from, may you rest in peace, dear Chandler Bing. This from Dr. Elahe Jamal Dehnashi who says, this man was my greatest teacher in life. Wow. wow. I can't believe that he only lived for 54 years. Chandler Muriel Bing. That's his middle name? I guess so. I don't know. You will always remain in, remain in my heart. Watching friends will be the greatest pleasure in the world and the greatest torment for me from now on. Rest in peace. I love you, Matthew Perry. This, these are from Iranians inside Iran on social media. Roham, savvy Roham, mm-hmm. who works for us here, said two of his friends, one from inside Iran and one who lives in Toronto, called him yesterday crying. Wow. Crying about Matthew. I'm not sure. I mean, people are upset. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. but this connection that Iranians feel for the cast of Friends Mm -hmm. is quite remarkable. It is. I didn't realize it was that deep. I mean, I knew knew that, you know, and we've talked about this many times because of that idea um, that, you know, there are a lot of Iranians who love Friends more so than, you know, non-Iranians who I've even spoken to. But yeah, that was really deep and profound. Some of those tweets that you were reading, I was like... Really emotional. Yeah. Now, now, what did you... I, I, I've got my thoughts on Matthew Perry. What did you want to say about you Matt know Perry? What? I mean, I watched Friends growing up. Um, I was never, like, you know, a fan, like, super fan by any means. I think it was a great show, but not 
to the extent of knowing um, Matthew Perry's middle name. Right. No, <laughs> Matthew Perry's uh, Chandler Bing's or middle Chandler name. Or Chandler Bing's yeah, yeah, middle yeah. name. Even, yeah. even more interesting. His character's middle yeah. name, yeah. Um, but, you know, I, the first thing that, that came to mind when I heard the news of his passing, um, which, by the way, I heard through a text message that you sent me because I hadn't seen the news, oh. um, was the fact that, you know, in, in so many of his interviews, he had mentioned that he wants to be remembered. I mean, at the time, he had said he wants to be in... Even in his book, he says, you know, a lot of people, if and when I die, they're going to remember me just for friends. Yeah. But I wish that weren't the case mm. because there's so much more that I want to be remembered for. Mm. And I think because of his struggle with addiction over the years, um, when he felt like, you know, he had things under control, he dedicated most of his life to helping with the w- yeah. helping those yeah. with addiction. And it's unfortunate that in all of the tributes I've seen, in all of the memories shared, in all of the you know, posts on Instagram and things like that, he's being remembered as Chandler and yeah. not as Matthew Perry, who dedicated his life to helping those with addiction. Fair, fair. Although understandable. Of course. Friends is a, you know, a series that ran for 10 years. Yes. He was identified with this character and it's a, it's a series and a character that moved so many people around the world. Mm-hmm. It's not a surprise, but yeah, and he did have his demons. It was funny he because did. as soon as we found out, I said this to you on Saturday night when uh, one of us was wearing a costume uh, <laughs> and the other one had a name tag on. Uh, <laughs> the other one had a genius I said, costume. <laughs> I said, I said <laughs> no, I said, I mean, you know, I'm not sure. Like, like I, 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 I don't want to say anything inappropriate. I know, I know the official word is that the... Um, Autopsy and all that is going to take a few weeks mm-hmm. for them to figure out exactly what happened. But a 54 year old doesn't just drown in his hot tub, right? That's like the there's thing, something. Yeah. And we knew he was battling stuff. And, and we also knew he'd become, he'd become sober. And, but, mm-hmm. but who knows, right? What was, I mean, it, 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 he, he definitely wasn't, he was having a hard time in life for, for sure. sure. And yeah. I mean, when you, when you read those stories, I remember watching him on um, doing interviews around the book and talking about how that entire time he was on Friends, he was, you know, doing opiates and mm-hmm. painkillers and all kinds of things to to kind of get through life, and which is also something that may, maybe is a relate a point that people can relate to with mm-hmm. him. You know, he's a he's ultimately a human guy as well as an extraordinary talent. He was very funny, yeah. you mm-hmm. know. Um, and I want to get into what he was generationally, but you're—I uh, always forget—are you younger than you're? You're Gen. I'm millennial. You're a millennial. Last oh, you're, year, the of last millennial. year of millennial. All right, <laughs> <laughs> <It's> exhausting. <laughs> so you're not—you don't want to be Gen Z. Well, but I don't mind. But I'm you, not really. Did you? You knew of Friends, obviously, growing up oh, in Iran. Absolutely. Yeah, my mom was a huge fan. My aunts were a huge fan, and um, and I became a huge fan. Um, when we actually immigrated to Canada. Mm -hmm. Um, But Friends actually was a huge deal in Iran. It became a huge deal in Iran for several reasons. One of them being um, when it was actually aired, when it actually came out, was the beginning of the satellites and the receivers becoming, you know, um, a thing in Iran and becoming mainstream so some people started having um, access to western mm. channels and guess what was playing right. friends the other reason was because the other reason is actually because the rest of the people who didn't have access to satellites um, or even those who did we would we would um, watch these on DVDs and on CDs right mm-hmm. so they mm. would we would actually watch and rewatch and watch and rewatch until the next one came out right mm-hmm. so by watching it like 10 times because you don't have anything else you you have a deeper connection you be, you become deeply connected to these characters mm. and um it became mainstream because i would share it with my friends my friends would share it with their friends so slowly this was like this was a culture that everybody was a part of okay and during that time there were two waves actually happening number one iranians were becoming um more exposed to the western world And at the same time, there was this wave of emigration happening amongst millennials as well. So they started going out and they didn't have an idea about what life is on this uh, this side of the world. And friends became that window for them. They would be like, I remember going to um, English lessons and we would learn English from friends and from like two other series that were mainstream at the time. 
um, like How I Met Your Mother and Lost. So they would actually hmm. give us CDs in the classes and be like, go home, watch this, come back with sentences or phrases that you don't know, and we would explain them to you, right? I wanted to get into this because I, I, I have in my unscientific research for this <laughs> documentary that I hope to make or series or something that about friends, uh, in anecdotally asking people for the last few few years, there's three things that always come up. Because you have to put this into context too, that Friends, even in its time, it wasn't necessarily the best sitcom on television. I mean, there was way better, you know, written stuff. There was, uh, um, and it's not, as as Pega, you said, I, I would agree, it's not great television. Mm -hmm. It's not the West Wing or Sopranos or something yeah. like that. It's or, you know, easy. It, well, here's the thing. The three things that always come up. One, it, it it's a device to learn English. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've heard this so much that I it helped me learn English. I, it was, now why Friends? And interestingly enough, right at the same time, as you may know, uh, as Friends, Seinfeld was on. Yeah. It was Hard for me to find Iranians who love Seinfeld. Why is that, right? I mean, in fact, the documentary should be Why Friends, Not, not Seinfeld. Seinfeld. <laughs> Seinfeld's much more sophisticated mm -hmm. in its totally. humor. It's a lot more subtle. It's a lot more New York. It's a lot more insular in some ways. It's sarcastic. It's dark. It's, you know, and which I, isn't to say that Iranians can't understand all of that, but for for someone whose first language is in English. Mm -hmm. It's very hard. It's yeah. much more sophisticated humor than Friends. Totally. Friends, Friends is simple stuff. Ha ha, Joey and Chandler yeah. sitting in front of the television. And the third thing, and I have to say this comes up, I, I, I'm not making this up, is that they were hot. Like the cast were good looking mm -hmm. yes. and Iranians like that. And I, and how many times, I, I mean, literally I've had people say to me, well, the Seinfeld, they're not really, it's not attractive. attractive. I, mean, attractive. I want to look at these people, you know? Yeah. And that was one of the ingredients for Friends. I mean, let's face it, around the world, it's mm -hmm. like they're the Cristiano Ronaldo of television. It's like, totally. this is friendly to the eyes. We love, you know, uh, there's something for everyone. <laughs> for, so, I mean... Uh, um, I, I'm sure if I do a proper deep dive at some point and do this, there'll be real meat on the bones of those theories. Mm -hmm. But but those are the things that come up, and you've you've talked about a couple of them. Yeah. I've experienced many of them myself living in Iran in that in, in those years. Like when I was 13 years old, I used to go to um, this English institute. I, it's still around. I think it's called Kish, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, and the teacher used to give us. CDs of episodes from Friends and from How I Met Your Mother. And mm -hmm. we were supposed to go home, dissect what it was saying, <laughs> come back and use what, what was said in there in our like discussion in that class. Yeah. So um, so eventually everyone in my age and in the um, like um, in the previous generation, which is also my generation. <laughs> <laughs> Claiming various yes, generations. Various yeah. generations. Um, yeah, it became very, very famous and popular and it was a way for for everyone to connect like i, I was can just connect gonna say with, that yeah yeah i think it also became a, a way to connect and what you were saying about it being intergenerational it's funny my cousins well, i haven't said that yet but uh, you know i'm gonna say it. yeah, yeah well ahead, we, yeah. we talked about yeah, it yeah, yeah but my cousin's daughter who's now i think 14 she's i mean whatever generation she is mm -hmm. She is a huge fan of Friends. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to her so many times about this because I found it fascinating that her, myself, and her mom are all of different generations. And yet, you know, we all connect and we all enjoy it. And I think it's because they're also relatable in the same way that, you know, it's easy watching or easy listening. It's also human. The same things, exactly. The same things that they talk about are things that anyone at any age can kind of relate to which is kind of weird first of all the, on the in, in generational thing that that i was going to bring up that you're, you're right we talked about it beforehand um see the, the funny thing about friends is it, it's my era like mm -hmm. it's like i was they're, they're my age basically right. and so and chandler himself that character is the ultimate gen xer like you know uh, that he in terms of what defined our generation mm -hmm. anyone who's in there from like 40 to 55 now or something is it they we thought of ourselves as you know it's kind of he was kind of a loner definitely down in the dumps like tortured disposition <laughs> cynicism and sarcasm were his battle tools right. abandonment issues like those were all things 
that define Gen X and actually define Matthew Perry too. I mean, mm-hmm, he was yeah. he was Chandler in, in, exactly. in, to a certain extent. And but the funny thing about relating to him, like I related to these characters as well, which in a way doesn't make a lot of sense. These are like notoriously, of course, as some people have pointed out over the years, white characters, yes, rich white characters, like who lives in that apartment in exactly. New York, right? Um, they look nothing like I could ever look. Who I, you sits know, in a cafe all day long and doesn't They work. don't seem to have jobs, <laughs> yeah. And they're like, you know, and yet somehow there was some kind of quality to it because mm-hmm. it's dealing with relationships and you know what the, the way it was kind of the accessible way in which it was presented you you know this iranian kid in thornhill like is watching <laughs> this going oh yeah there it's like my life you know yeah. Yeah. and which is quite remarkable really i think part of it is also i i saw it as kind of an escape especially now i you know in recent years whenever i watch like reruns of friends it's all it for me it's like okay what do i want to watch that i can kind of shut off the world comfort food yes. yeah that's yeah. exactly what they it call is. it friends therapy oh it's actually got a name i <laughs> didn't know that okay yeah. mm-hmm. well um rest in peace matthew perry it's yes. not one of those things i remember it's one of those moments where you you kind of I remember when, for some reason, oh, it's always when Prince died for me, mm-hmm. the musician Prince, mm-hmm. it was it really affected me because when it comes out of nowhere, you yeah. know, um, I mean, there's some people who are younger, but you kind of expect to die somehow. And then there's people who are older that, you know, like Tony Bennett, oh, he's going to die at some point. Mm-hmm. Matthew Perry? Yeah, it was he Just shock. put out the book talking about his life. Like, yeah. Just not thump. So it was like, what? What am I... Why is he trending? What's going on? Mm-hmm. You know, is this real? Um, I always so, get scared when I see names trending on Twitter. It's become such a like, yeah. as soon as you see a name trending on Twitter, you're like, oh my God, did they die? Something happened. Yeah. 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 Um, I was very sad. I was like, oh my God, I'm getting old. People are dying. <laughs> well, um, yeah. I mean, it's, it. you know, I was going to say that even preparing for today's roundup, it's like talking about a few people who've died, mm-hmm. and 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 I, I didn't. I was actually thinking of making this point, and then I thought maybe it's insensitive to be towards people who are septuagenarians or octogenarians, like you know, uh, our parents or, or, or grandparents. But they, but you know, you get to a certain age, like if you're in your 80s, a lot of your friends have are dying passed, or have yeah. died on yeah. or something. I feel like we're living in a moment now where there's, I mean. I, it's weird all these uh, there, there's a lot of sadness there's a lot of people who are dying um who are not dying of old age that's you know, what I was gonna that say. we are talking about and, and maybe that's always been the way it is and we just have more access to them now through yeah. social media but today we're talking about matthew perry and armita mm-hmm. you know um two people who are definitely uh young not old enough young. to have died yeah yeah, yeah. um let's move on anything else you want to say about friends just fun fact um Many people might know Mehra Modiri. He's a he's a, a director. He's made many series in Iran, and his first series that was very very famous at the time, and we w- used to watch it every um, every night. I think I, if I remember correctly, on TV, Pavarchin um, is mm, somehow based off of Friends. So not that not mm. that he actually took like concepts from from Friends. He, he got ideas from that series and now people are finding out like they're saying if you if you analyze his series mm-hmm. especially Paul Batch, and you're gonna see a lot of um, a lot of things that have come through mm-hmm. from from friends so yeah. you say, well, and the other thing about the generational ele- 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 elements of friends is it's so it's interesting to me that it still resonates with the 14 year old yeah or even a 20 year old because it is, as I say, I, I was I was alive in the 20th century, you know, before this, this new century, and it, it is very I mean, late 20th century. It's mm-hmm. not. It's pre digital. They're exactly. not walking around with iPhones, that, right? Yeah. They don't. They're they're not texting. They're just like you know. They're not even. They don't even have computers. I don't yeah. think you know. I think like Ross has one because he's a scientist or something. So it's it, it should feel really antiquated mm-hmm. and yet somehow you know uh, stylistically and humor wise it, it works still i think it's part of the charm like what it's funny that you say that because one of the conversations that i had with with my cousin's daughter 
is about an episode where, and I'm sure there's so many episodes that this happened, but someone was running to get the phone because they didn't want it to go to the answering machine and to pick up like the actual handheld piece and all yeah, that. Yeah. And this was a conversation between, you know, me and my cousin's daughter. This was, this was like something that we talked about for, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And to her, it was just such a foreign concept because, you know, well, iPhones and technology and all of that. But I think that's part of the charm is it's interesting for a lot of people who watch it who weren't part of that time. Yeah. 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 So rest in peace, Matthew Perry. Yes. Rest in and peace. rest in peace, Armita Geravan. Now this mm-hmm. is a, you know, back to a reality of, of a different kind. Uh, this is inside Iran. If the name is familiar to you, but you can't remember exactly why, and I hope you do know the name at this point, this is, this is one of those say her name kind of moments. Armita Geravan. Armita was, of course, the 16 year old. Mm-hmm who a little over a month ago was um, on the sub, walked onto the subway in Tehran um, and basically never was never conscious again after she yeah. was dragged out of the, the subway after what, by all reports, uh, credible, more, the more, more credible ones, was a, some sort of a confrontation with hijab police. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so October 1st is when <coughs> the incident took place and, you know, it, it's one of those situations where she walked onto the subway like you said and then we don't know exactly what happened but as we've seen over the course of the last year and a bit we can make conclusions that um, there was some sort of altercation that ended up with her being pronounced brain dead as of October 22nd um, and then well she was in a coma she was in a coma and we were all hoping that this that, is something that she yeah. could rise out of but exactly. to, yeah and then Um, And so on the 22nd, she was pronounced brain dead. And unfortunately, as of just two days ago, she was pronounced dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's not a, I mean, I guess we all knew that was coming, Mm -hmm. perhaps. Unfortunately, yes. But um, a couple of the things, I'm going to get into the funeral and what happened there yesterday. But a couple of the things that um, are, seem relevant is, uh, are that, um, on the one hand, it's uh, shockingly sad, mm-hmm. uh, again. On the other hand, even given this, and it's maybe especially given the comparisons to Masa Amini, it's shockingly sad that it isn't making yes. the, the same waves that uh, Masa's death uh, did. Um, and this is, I mean, certainly not internationally, mm-hmm. um, but even amongst Iranians, whether it's fatigue, whether it's just acceptance, whether it's just people are, are so sick to their stomachs they can't do it anymore, their, their, their situations are not that dissimilar. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet, uh, you know, after a while, it's like, what, what can we do? What can we say? Um, and that in itself is quite devastating. The difference between where we were at last year and where we're at now. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly in this state of shocked, but not shocked when it comes to us talking about events coming from inside Iran. And we've talked about this so many times over the course of the last year and a half, but it is in fact that roller coaster of emotions and it is that emotional fatigue and it is that you know things can't get any worse but then they do it's a combination of all of these things that i think contributes to the fact that you know we're not seeing that same reaction after a while it almost feels like the regime is preying upon the normalization of this Mm -hmm. that knows that we won't that's uh, actually exactly what they're doing this is this is one of the strategies they've used for years and years and I can give you another firsthand experience that I've had that my mom's generation have had too. So, um, uh, when I when I when I went to school in Iran, um, as like a in elementary school. Mm-hmm. So imagine like I'm I'm, a, you're talking about children between the ages of six and maybe twelve, right? right. Um, and during Dahe Fajr, which it goes from first of February to the eleventh of February to top Bisudu Bahman. Um, that's the time when Khomeini comes to Iran, and then on the 22nd, um, uh, on 11th of February, Shah flies out. So right. that's the that's when 
the regime is actually, exactly mm-hmm. exactly so in that in that time is celebrated in Iran every year for the like as a victory of the IRGC okay and when we were in school they used to take us in one of those days they used to take us in a like a, in a video room or, or whatnot and they would show us these horrible images of of people who had died and the Shah had killed that's what they they said they were like you would see like severe like heads and people without arms and you would see really 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 terrifying images wow. that they would like you, you don't even see on social media or on YouTube because they're banned mm-hmm. but they were being shown to kids firsthand because they wanted to normalize this and because they wanted to say listen this is what they did and you might actually see this again if you like if you don't fight with us almost you know what i mean so yeah. wow yeah, yeah that's yeah. really it's it's very disturbing but now it's kind of like in my head if i see those images maybe i'm not as shocked or as surprised mm. as someone not not that i'm not not sensitive i mean I maybe we're all um, a little anxious or we have stress issues because of the images mm-hmm. that we were mm-hmm. that we were exposed to. But this is exactly what's happening in the, in, in our world today. Like no, last but it, year. It's, it's definitely true that you're yeah. used to something exactly. different. If you if you grow up in the Middle East, yeah, then, you know, I, I talk about like the, you know, when I go somewhere in the world and I see someone carrying a machine gun, I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, you know, and, yeah. and Iranians tend to laugh at me and go, oh, dude, you know. Yeah, like, we've seen this all the we, time. Yeah, been there, done that, right? Same thing is happening with this movement. Um, last year, we were all shocked and surprised. We were like, oh, my God, you know, this has happened to this girl. But now we're like, okay, one, two, three, four, five. We've seen it and we're not shocked and we're not surprised. And this is what the regime is actually using. It's n- trying to normalize this thing. And it's trying to create this fear inside of you that if you are the next person coming out and like chanting, we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing. Right, that we did you, today. they're used yeah. as an example. Exactly. Armita becomes an example for exactly. the regime. Although I I wouldn't say I don't think I think it's kind of maybe underestimating uh, Iranians in Iran and outside, around the world. In fact. To say that everybody was completely shocked by Masa Amini too. I mean, this was—it has been 45 years, or, or you know, in, in the making, and people were. Um, it, it just became a precipitant. It became that lightning rod moment. Um, it, it's just—it's just very telling that um, perhaps that Armita is not, does not at this point seem to be a, a, the same kind of lightning mm-hmm. rod. And I think that I think that's a, I think that's a year of. Of people just putting themselves out there, and and, exactly. and and all the crackdowns, and all the imprisonments, and all the torture, and all the things you're talking about, add to that. The world is like on fire, on and fire, yeah. all the stuff going on in the Middle yeah. East. I, was I mean, say. there was an element of, um, you you know, uh, I actually saw somebody comment under somebody who put a picture of Armita, and like, you know, how many people are dying in Gaza, and it's mm-hmm. like, okay, so now we're comparing, yeah. you know, yeah. levels I of oppression, and yeah. I mean, it's come on, like, you know, but um, uh, now on top of all of this, of course, uh, there's a funeral for Armita that happens yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, Iran Wire reported that the number of plain closed officers and police that were deployed at this funeral, at this, uh, it's Tehran's Beheshte Zahra Cemetery, reportedly outnumbered the mourners. Oh, wow. And of course, then Nasrin Sotudeh, the noted and acclaimed human rights lawyer mm-hmm, who mm-hmm. spent most of the last 20 years in and out of jail herself, gets arrested. The local Fars news agency, I want to quote, said, uh, been arrested over and handed uh, over to judicial authorities for not wearing a headscarf and disturbing the society's mental security. Laughable. Well, it <laughs> it is funny. I mean, at, at this point, you know, in all the disastrous news, the society's mental security? What, what I, does that even mean? I well, would love to know. Disturbing the society's mental security is what modern talking music does, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
I don't think it's what Nasreen Sotina is doing, but not. <laughs> Never did I think in the midst of a conversation with, about <laughs> Nasreen Sotina. Well, I mean, disturbing the society's <laughs> mental security because she. I, I mean, it's it, it. It just it really does become comical. Yeah. The obstacle course of language and that they the that they come up with to to detain people, but. Um, you know, this is a this is another wave of of sort of another message sent to you know we are not just going to crack down on the kid who goes in the subway and isn't wearing a headscarf, but if you turn up at the funeral and try and make mm-hmm. hay of this, yeah. you know, uh, doesn't matter how famous you are, we'll we'll take you. And there's even reports that she was tortured or beaten or well i mean there's reports that you know it was a violent arrest um definitely reports of the fact that she was beaten there was an kind of an update if you will earlier today that came from her husband um indicating that her glasses had been broken in the midst of this arrest and um you know he had tried to get a new pair of glasses to her and they wouldn't even allow that and then he went on to say that um you know when she was appearing in front of the prosecutor's office she had still said that she was not going to have the hijab on so she was still defying um and she refused to wear the hijab so you know there's there's definitely more and more that we're hearing but i think it's consistent with everything we've seen the last year and a bit we don't really know what's happened we don't know what what to trust what information Mm -hmm. comes out we that that's part of it is that there's always so many unknowns Yes. And we're, we're going based on, you know, history repeating itself and, and seeing mm. what has happened over the course of the last year and a half. And if Although not we that, probably four, can trust Reza years. Khan, no, right? No, absolutely. His, but her, her I, I just mean the extent of, you know, how much she was beaten or what, what occurred. He probably doesn't even know. Yeah. No, but I wanted to speak to, to talk about Armita again. Um, just so you know, in all the all the wagons and all the metro station um, and, and all the trains, there are cameras. So if the Iranian regime wanted to say, like, mm-hmm. had proof right. of this being right. of anything other than the hijab um, police, they would release, they would have mm-hmm. released that video and be like, you know, if this she is had what actually, happened. you know, passed out because she didn't have breakfast, which is exactly. what they were like. But, but they're, they've realized, they've come to this yeah, realization. We've somehow, for some reason, never seen the video. Of what exactly. Happened. We've never seen the video. And that has um, sort of a marketing answer behind it, too. Because sometimes when you, when you pop a question, people are going to start thinking about the question rather than what's actually happened. So now it's become more about, ooh, what happened to this girl? Uh, rather than, okay, she is definitely dead and she is definitely dead because of a violent action and we shouldn't care about the details of it all but you know now we're thinking about what happened really you well, know. that's exactly what we had talked about when we were the talking fog. about the funds being released mm. to the Islamic Republic. It's it's more so the question of the fact that it's happening as opposed to why and how mm. and the logistics yeah. of it and yeah. all of that. Yeah, where is it now? Is it in Tokyo or, yeah. or, or Korea <laughs> or in, in Qatar? Um <laughs> Okay, and yes, there's no mystery. I mean, no. I, I stand by my essay of a month ago, you know, when it was like, there's no mystery behind the, the death of Armita. And uh, well, at the time it was between what ha- behind what happened to Armita. Mm-hmm. And now it's the death of Armita. Um, rest in peace again. Now, final uh, topic before we wrap up today's roundup uh, and come back on Thursday for a regular edition of Rook. Iranian Foreign Minister... <laughs> Hossein Amir Abdullahian back on CNN this weekend. They can't get enough of this guy. The amount of he's coverage. Like a, he, he, he's like, uh, you know, it's like the Johnny Carson show where they used to have certain comedians who would come on regularly. This guy at CNN, what, can we book him again? Let's get him back on. Let's get him back on. Um, and there's an argument to be made, as I, uh, which was the argument that we had and we talked about and the argument that I made that um, we shouldn't give him a platform mm-hmm. unless it's going to be done in some sort of fact checking or or a very critical context um and this is when he was on with Cristiano and poor a few yes. months ago uh now he's been on he was on Farid Zakaria's show but it was uh, a woman named Biana Goldrica who mm-hmm. was um who's hosting and I thought she did a decent job I with thought him. she I did mean, she, very well she did as bad as about as well as you can do mm-hmm. um and if the part of the argument about not platforming him uh, is where I'm coming from. Then we're not helping by platforming him again here to talk about it. But, but just to share some some context. Um, first of all, it was interesting uh, that whilst at the UN he spoke in English, mm-hmm. but in the interview 
Spoke Farsi. Spoke Persian, yeah. Like not not willing to uh, kowtow to the Western mm-hmm. non hijabed woman interviewing him. Uh, uh, he must. Uh, I must speak in Persian. And I don't think. In fact, I'm quite sure. Uh, by the looks of it, he he didn't need a translation. She mm-hmm. was asking the questions in English. At one point, he interrupts her. So yes. he's not waiting for a translation. He yeah. knows exactly what she's saying. We know the guy can speak English. Um, and by the way, he's got some weird 16-year-old girl vocal fry thing. Like he's like, ah, like, <laughs> like he's like this weird thing that I, I'm, I'm it's, it's like a strange high-pitched vocal fry. But anyway. Um, he never came out of puberty. Probably. Yeah, something yeah. Yeah, underdeveloped. Uh, yeah. um, I wanted to bring this up partly to talk about the platforming thing and the outrageous things that that this guy represents, mm-hmm. and you know, uh, one of the henchmen, if you will, of this regime. Um, it's interesting though because his message right now, I mean, he's clearly on message, mm-hmm. and the message is. Palestine, Palestinians good, Israel bad. Not a surprise. Yep. But the la- but the language that he's using, or perhaps the language that he's adopted, or the language he's been used to, or he's, he's been taught or appropriated, is very, very eerily similar to the language that gets used by some on the Western left. This is about liberating Palestine. Mm-hmm. This is about... So first of all, he says... October 7th, which was the attack on Israel by Hamas, was an act by those who had been occupied in an effort to liberate, liberate Palestine. He said what, this was strange, what Hamas did was legal under international <laughs> law and they were because they were just defending themselves. I'm not sure how attacking innocent people at a music festival, for example, is, is legal. He called the attack a histor- historic victory, mm-hmm. right? Um, so no sympathy there for the... For, but then he goes on to talk about, um, you know, this is about liberating Palestine and stuff. And the reason I, I bring this up is because I fear there are a lot of, uh, I believe there are a lot of well-intentioned people um, who are desperately uh, concerned and upset about what's happening in Gaza and mm-hmm. what's happening to the Palestinian people and, and uh, innocent kids who are, you know, have no stock in this being bombed, you know, whatever happens. Um but without a proper without the proper context you have this guy who's saying all the same things that they're saying at rallies mm-hmm. some you know um free palestine let's see and it's it's a concern that someone who doesn't have the context yes. might see this guy as an ally mm-hmm. And whatever we want to say about, whatever I would want to say about Israel or Gaza or Palestine, I don't believe that the Iranian regime is your ally, is anybody's ally, (laughs) except for, you know, those who are, gain power from being associated or in the regime and maintain that power by suppressing people in in bloody and murderous ways. There is clearly a difference between wanting peace or mourning for those innocent lives being lost in Gaza, or even even taking a full pro-Palestinian position um, and siding with Hamas and calling October 7th a historic victory. Mm -hmm. And I fear the regime is now not only getting a pass from some on the Western left, but they are maybe in solidarity, you know? So then fast forward to, in some cases, accidentally. I mean, they don't know, you Mm -hmm. know? But fast forward to somebody, a a journalist friend of mine telling me that on one of the Toronto rallies, I guess this weekend, that there were, it was a pro-Palestinian rally, and there's a lot of people there talking about kids, et cetera. And then there's a bunch of people with Islamic Republic flags. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I, I think a lot of the people on the rally might be educated, but they might not know that what this flag represents Mm -hmm. for Iranians. And it's very disturbing, right? Yeah. Because this guy is... The, the this 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 person who goes on CNN and says this these things for anyone who doesn't have the context of who he is and what the Iranian regime has done to the Iranian people even just in the last year might mistakenly think this guy's an ally of f- freedom or mm-hmm. something right yeah i mean i think it's it's exactly what you said um kind of at the beginning is that they're adapting the language that they use based on 
the what's been occurring in the last you know since October 7th for example because never have we seen this type of language used by the Islamic Republic before when talking about um, the Arab Israeli conflict there's been talks of liberation and things like this but not in the same way and certainly not in the same is that context right? yeah I didn't know that for sure for sure um, and I think the other thing is you know when we when we refer back to this interview and I agree with you I think Bianca did an excellent job because there was so much pushback and we've talked about this when we talk about you know individuals like Amir Abdullahi on being given a platform and not being you know not giving them pushback when they're on air she did a fantastic job of that in trying to you know ask about why it is that the Islamic Republic was so invested in what was going on and I thought it was you know, almost funny the response that Amir Abdullahian gave, and and he said it's because of national security interests, and the pushback that Biana gave was, you know, there's other countries in the region and they don't seem to be concerned with national security, yeah. so why is it that the Islamic Republic is? Um, and it was just deflection, and it, it seemed as if there was this almost. Um, script that he was going off of in terms of adapted language and yeah. he couldn't answer that question he couldn't use the same adaptive language to answer that question and so i think i think we see it very clearly in situations like that i don't know you know it's it's this thing i keep returning to where i go I mean, uh, you know i don't I, I i keep wanting to like just hold up my hand and go whatever you believe don't believe this guy yeah don't 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 believe that these guys are on your even on they, anybody's on side. anybody's side yeah. on the palestinian side Absolutely. they're not you know this is like they're you know we we know what this regime is all about and it and it's and i think it, it obviously puts uh it puts iranians in a strange position because there's strange bedfellows here mm -hmm. it's like what if i want to support you know Palestinian people, but I don't want to be, you know, buddies with Abdullah Hion. Yeah. So you know, you have to carve that out somehow. And I again, I fear that when he goes on CNN and says these things, for sure, for sure, there's somebody in Middle America who's, you know, who if they're not anti-Israel, their 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 sympathies are for Palestine or whatever. Who look at this guy, don't know who he is, don't know a lot about the mm -hmm. the context of of Iran and the the regime, and go, oh, he's He's making a lot of sense, right? He's talking about freedom and liberty yeah. and, you know. And we talked about those nuances the last time when he had his conversation with Christian Amanpour when we said, you know, there were there were things that he was saying that if you didn't know the atrocities that the Islamic Republic has committed, yeah. then you would almost think, well, he doesn't seem so bad and, and that sort of mentality. But again, it's the context. It's those nuances that most, if not all, Iranians have, but others may not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're, uh, they've used this strategy, I think, um, for many years now. I think the first person who mastered this art of deflection <laughs> and lies was um, Ahmadinejad. Oh. He would actually come to, to TV and like talk about all these stuff that people were really like worried about at mm. the time, like in, in small cities and in villages and in like tiny towns. Well, the first person was probably Khomeini. Mm -hmm. Possibly. In the beginning, right? Yeah, <laughs> in the very beginning, he was like, I'm with you, people, yeah. But only yeah. now we're realizing that all the videos are coming out from those days, and um, we're like, what is he even saying, <laughs> you know? What are these lies? Um, but yeah, they've done this for many years, and now um, they found a really, really good um, medi medium to do that even exactly. like bigger, which exactly. is social media. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I think they're I think this guy, Adolahion and, and his cohorts are rubbing their hands, going, This is great. Yeah. We get to be on a side totally. here, you know, uh, and, and the side isn't just the side of the Iranian regime. We get to be on a side in the in the in the world yeah. that puts us, you know, on the side of all these people who believe something. And and again, the Iranian regime should not be considered on any side, no. you know, mm -hmm. it's uh, but it, it's just a um, uh, I, I didn't know even how to talk about this because this is really separate from whatever your feelings are of what's going on in Israel and Gaza. This is like, don't let some this regime manipulate this mm -hmm. to win support, yeah. you know, amongst... But they are, unfortunately, and it's not a question. If you go and look in Twitter and in Instagram, the you will see replies on on the interviews or on like parts of the video, his videos that have come out, where people are like, "Yeah, you go, like we're yeah. with you," you yeah. know, and that's Absolutely, very bro. dangerous, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. And actually, 
I, I know this for a fact that um, the Intelligence Bureau of Iran has agents and has many, many, many different accounts. And when things don't go their way, they come in and they start like hacking into course, it. Yeah. And they start putting in comments and they start like questioning stuff to get that conversation going mm -hmm. up. Okay, there are people with us. Um, and they are so good at hacking and doing that stuff. It, it, this might be... Um, fun for you guys to know you know that beginning of reels when we could only have like videos of up to one minute on instagram mm -hmm. it was like six seven years ago and that's still the way it is no they oh. just changed it but i okay. mean it's it, it changes every few <laughs> months but <laughs> sorry yeah in the very very beginning no one could put any videos over one minute like the mm. tv thingy wasn't even there they hacked the system and the only person on and on Instagram and um, on the Instagram um, platform who was um, who was allowed not allowed who was able to put videos of like 30 minutes was Khomeini was his page hmm. well, Khomeini's page was able Khomeini to, or Khomeini Khomeini yeah. Khomeini, yeah. Khomeini. Khomeini Khomeini's page you gotta get the vowel right. yeah, I know <laughs> I know oh my god yeah I'm sorry I know who they I know their differences I'm sorry <laughs> yeah but it was similar Khomeini. beards yeah uh, but uh, yeah yeah Khomeini's page was hacked. All I mean, right. Hacked Instagram. We've run the gamut <laughs> from succession uh, <laughs> costumes, costumes, and I use the term costume loosely, <laughs> to uh, Chandler Bing, to uh, Abdullahi on. Um, anything else? No? Not on my side. No. All right. Nope. Go I think Arsenal. We covered it. <laughs> uh, one episode. You're wearing Arsenal if, if Red. If there was one episode, you're wearing that Arsenal we didn't hear. Red. That's uh, true. I, so at least I hope it's Arsenal Red and not Liverpool or Man United Red. <laughs> uh, see you Thursday. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you. Raha June. <laughs> uh, nice to have you here. Um, this is full time for Rook for today. Our bonus podcast edition. We appreciate you guys out there. Thank you so much for listening. Do give us feedback at info at rookmedia.com, info at rookmedia.com, or you can post on any of our platforms. Uh, remember to share our content. Thanks to the amazing team who put this show together. Talented Anahita, Smart Pega, Savvy Roham, Bearded Omid, Super Parisa, and Methodical Cave. Thank you to all of you out there supporting us and sharing our content. Please subscribe if you've not done so already. Find me on Instagram at Giangomeshi. Find Rook on Instagram at Rook Media. Mizunbashi. <laughs>